the Holy Spirit and his work. We have discovered that the source of valid objective information is the inspired word of God. What we refer to as the scriptures give us the only valid information about the Holy Spirit we can have, the only reliable source. The Holy Spirit has revealed all the truth about himself that we can know. Therefore, since this is the case, we must examine what the Holy Spirit has said about himself. Previous lessons, we pointed out many misunderstand the working of the Holy Spirit. In this lesson, we want to find out what the Holy Spirit has said through the Word of God about Holy Spirit baptism. Acts chapter 1, verse 4, While staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Find out what this means. Keep listening. Keep watching this lesson. Be sure to download the note card you'll find in the video description, a link to the note card, and follow along with the lesson, fill it in. It'll be a record for you of what you have learned in this lesson from the Bible. And I'll, by all means, get your Bible. Go get your Bible. How many of you have a Bible? I always ask that question. I always like to see the Bible. So get your Bible, follow along, and if you like this sermon, ring the bell. Also, uh, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Ring the bell to get a notification of when new content is added. If you want to follow us on social media, links to our social media account are in the video description. So now, let's jump into the sermon. As we've talked about the Holy Spirit and His work, we understand that God the Father was in, has been involved in work in planning, in planning the material universe, in the planning of the church. We learned that the Son executed God's plan, was a part of that execution. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, Word was with God, and the Word was God. He executed. He said, I will build my church. Matthew 16, verse 18. And then we learn that the role of the Holy Spirit was in organization. Miraculous beginning of the universe. Miraculous beginning of the church. He is the organizer. We have learned that the Holy Spirit confirmed the word that the apostles spoke. Confirm Jesus as God's Son. The Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus at his baptism and remained with him. Matthew 3, 16, Jesus, when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. Behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. Mark chapter 1, verse 10, Luke 322 are parallels to this passage by the other writers. John, in recalling this, says in John 131, said, I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness, said, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. He bore witness to Jesus whom God has sent, utters the words of God, for he gives a spirit without measure. John chapter 3 and verse 34. The miraculous power of God 
was not common occurrences. Miraculous manifestations at certain points in history we've seen in creation, the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. Miracles that were performed to bring God's creation into existence. Moses delivering Israel from Egypt, the parting of the Red Sea. Prophets' instructions, they performed miracles. The Holy Spirit led them to perform miracles. Jesus, the Messiah, while he was on earth, performed various miracles showing his power over different natural phenomena. And then the apostles in the early church, there were miracles. Beginning of each dispensation, sustained by established laws to ensure the validity and revelation and fulfillment of God's purposes, miracles were performed. We've talked before about the duration of miracles, how that in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8, talks about how they'll fail, they'll cease, they'll vanish away, but God's word does not pass away. Paul talks about having partial knowledge. We know in part, we prophesy in part, when that which is perfect has come, that is the complete revelation of God's word. Paul said when he thought as he thought as a child, he spoke as a child, but now he put away childish things. The word provides maturity. We saw he saw dimly. He knew in part Revelation or First Corinthians thirteen verse twelve. The word of God helps us now clearly see when we read, Paul said, we might understand his knowledge of the revelation of the mystery of God. We know that these miraculous gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13, we find that they will not abide, but yet the word of God is living, powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. And 1 Peter 1, verse 23, since you have been born again, not a perishable seed, but imperishable, through the living and abiding word. The duration of miracles is likened to two things. When the space shuttle goes into orbit, we find to get it there, there must be some rocket boosters. There must be enough fuel available. And when the ship doesn't need all that, that is jettisoned away. Or when a building is built, we see a scaffolding that is put up while they work on the outside facade of the building. Once that is over with, all that scaffolding comes down. Now notice this chart, the baptism, its purpose. Was it fulfilled or not? And does it continue? First baptism, we talk about the baptism of Moses in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Their passing through the Red Sea is likened to a baptism. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Was it fulfilled? Yes. Does it continue to happen today? No. John's baptism was a water baptism. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, he said, I baptize you with water for the remission of sins. And it was for the remission of sins to prepare them for Christ. Was it fulfilled? Yes. Does it continue? No. Then we have the baptism of suffering talked about in Mark chapter 10, verse 38. Jesus said, you do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I'm baptized? He's talking about the baptism of suffering. Its purpose was for Christ and the apostles, it was the cost of bringing the truth to light. Was it fulfilled? Yes. Does it continue? No. 
And then we have the one we're talking about, Holy Spirit baptism. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, he said, He who comes after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you, watch this, with Holy Spirit and fire. Two baptisms talk about there, but Holy Spirit baptism was a sign on the apostles and on the house of Cornelius. Was it fulfilled? Yes, certainly it was. Does it continue? No, it does not. We'll see that in a minute. Then the baptism of Jesus was by water. Acts 2.38 Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or forgiveness of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It was for salvation into Christ. When we're baptized into Christ, Romans 6, 3, and 4, we find that it's a burial. Galatians 3, 27, we put on Christ. It began in Acts chapter 2, and yes, it does continue. And then the last baptism we find in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 7 is the baptize, baptism of fire talked about in Matthew chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. It's God's punishment on unbelievers. It has not yet happened, and it is yet in the future. So let's look at the purpose of Holy Spirit baptism. John is speaking in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 5, then, Jeru then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him, that is John the baptizer, in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers. Who's he speaking to? Pharisees and Sadducees. He said, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. He goes on to say in verse 9, do you do not think to say to yourselves, he says, we have Abraham, our fathers, and he says, for I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones, and even now the axe is laid to the roots of the tree. Therefore, every tree which does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. There's the baptism of fire that we're talking about. And so we see that one. Then we continue to see in verse 11. He said, I baptize you with water for repentance but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Watch what he says. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the administrator of immersion in the Holy Spirit and fire. Is what's pointed out there. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Luke 3.16 he who is mightier than I. John 1, 30, 30. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Holy Spirit, those baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire are not specified in any of these passages. Not every Pharisee or Sadducee and not all who came to John. Not us. These passages specify the administrator and not the recipients. To whom did Jesus promise the Holy Spirit? Notice John chapter 14, verse 26, but when the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send him in my name, he will teach you, you disciples, all things, bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Then chapter 15, verse 26, when the, Holy, when the Helper comes, whom I will send from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. 
John chapter 16, verse 24, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Luke 24, 48, you are witnesses these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed, there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, from on high. So the 12, notice at the Last Supper, John 13, 2, during the supper, the, he said, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him, Jesus knew who it was going to be. We see Jesus wash their feet. John 13, verse 4. Jesus identifies his betrayer. John 13, verse 18 through 20. And then we see he predicts Peter's denial. Final instruction to the 12 before his death. We see that there in John chapter 13, verse 31 through 16, verse 33. He was reclined at the table with the 12. He came with the 12. Luke 22, 14, the apostles were with him when he ate of the supper. And we look at Acts chapter 1 and verse 2, and notice what's said there in Acts chapter 1 and verse 2, until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. We already saw the passages where they had that promise. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized, the apostles, with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Notice that water, you will be baptized not many days from now. The apostles are baptized with the Holy Spirit. They cast lots for them. And we find Pius was numbered with the eleven. And the Holy Spirit, we find, fills the whole house where they, the apostles, were sitting. He rested on each of them, them whom, them apostles, them 11, 12 apostles now. And it, what did it do? It gave them utterance. And then as we continue with that idea, notice, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And the they there, again, the apostles. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as fire, one set upon each of them, them apostles. They were all filled. Again, apostles, apostles, we see. Verse 7, look, are not all these who speak these apostles? Peter standing up with the eleven, there's the apostles, raised his voice and said to them. Then we look at Acts chapter 2. Again. Peter summons, is summoned to tell the Gentiles words by which they could be saved. Peter preached Jesus to them, according to Acts chapter 10, verse 34. And then we find in 47, he says, Can any forbid water? For, being, for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fell on them, we find in Acts chapter 10 and verse 44, while Peter was speaking. The Holy Spirit was poured out on them, we learn. They spoke with tongues. They were hearing them speak in tongues and extolling God, and then Peter declares 
can any forbid water. As on the apostles at the beginning, reminding Peter of the promise and the gift was the ability to speak in tongues. These passages in Acts chapter 11 point that out as Peter was retelling to the Jews that would question him about going to Gentiles. What was his purpose? The astonished Jewish Christians who were with Peter to let them know that the Gentiles could now receive the gospel, confirming the absolvement of the barrier between the Jew and the Gentile removed all doubt that Gentiles must be baptized. And so what do we see there? To silence the critics who question Peter's going to the Gentiles. Also to convince the Jews Gentiles were now accepted, verse 18, and Peter couldn't withstand God, neither should anyone else. Now it wasn't given to save them. He's going to hear what he must do to be saved. Peter was sent to them to tell them what they must do in order to be saved. Acts chapter 11 and verse 14, he will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and your household. It says, as I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them. The Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles to provide undeniable evidence that Jewish Christians were to accept them when they complied with the words Peter was sent to speak. So what do we have? We have in Acts chapter 2, the apostles were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, Acts 2.38, 3,000 were baptized into water. Acts chapter 4, verse 4, 5,000 baptized into water. Acts chapter 6 and verse 6, apostles laid hands on Stephen and Philip. Stephen performed miracles then. It took the laying on of apostles' hands to do this, not a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 8, 1 through 25, Samaritans baptized in water. Philip performed miracles. Apostles laid hands on the Samaritans for them to receive spiritual gifts. Acts chapter 8, verse 26, the Ethiopian eunuch baptized in water. No miracles were worked. He wasn't given any powers, any spiritual gifts. Acts chapter 9, Saul baptized in the water. And in Matthew, uh, Acts twenty two sixteen, arise, be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Then it, Peter said in Acts chapter 11 and verse 15, he said, talks about as on us, the Holy Spirit fell on Cornelius as on us at the beginning, Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 48. Peter had to tell about it. Peter had to go back to the beginning to find a like example, not the beginning of creation, but the beginning of this dispensation, Acts chapter 2. Peter had to remember back six to ten years, and Peter had to later tell about it again. You know how that a good while ago, he says in, in, this, in this passage of Scripture, he tells us there. And then in Acts chapter 15 and verse 7 through 11, he tells us in this passage, when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe by his mouth. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did us. He made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Notice that. He acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did. 
So the Holy Spirit baptism confirmed the beginning of a new dispensation, confirmed the Gentiles were able to re be received into fellowship. It has fulfilled its purpose. Notice this chart comparing Holy Spirit baptism and baptism in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit baptism administered by Jesus. The Spirit is the element promised to a few, signed and empowered people to confirm the Word of God, manifested by tongues, no physical action required, and there was no salvation in Holy Spirit baptism. Its purpose has been fulfilled. Now, look at the baptism in Jesus' name. It was administered by man. He commanded the chariot to stop. They both went down into the water, and we find that Philip and the eunuch and Philip baptized him. Water is the element. It's commanded to all. It is to remit sins. It's manifested by a burial, not by tongues. Confession and burial are required. It saves us from sin, 1 Peter 3.21. Even baptism does also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Purpose, its purpose, continues. Miracles have accomplished their purpose. They were needed, the apostles, to be guided into all truth. The Word has all truth. On Cornelius' household to show the Gentiles accepted, that has been accomplished. Signs to confirm the Word, the Word has been confirmed. Spiritually gifted to edify the church, to build the church, to teach the church, to guide the church, and today the Word is sufficient to edify the church. Do you obey the Spirit? Don't reject it. The inspired revelation by the Holy Spirit was supernatural, verbal, final, and confirmed. There is no room for more divine instruction. Are we satisfied with what the Spirit has said about himself and other things? The Holy Spirit has given us the plan of salvation. To hear the word, the word that has been revealed from the Father by the Holy Spirit and written down by the apostles. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. You'll know the truth. The truth shall set you free. They will all be taught by God, John 6, 45. Acts 15, 7. After there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said, Brothers, you know that in early days God made a choice among you that by my mouth Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Hebrews eleven six. Without faith it's impossible to please him, for whoever would come to God must believe that he is. He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Repent of our past sin. Jesus said, I tell you, no, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. The time of this ignorance God overlooked now commands all men everywhere to repent. 2 Corinthians seven ten. Godly sorrow produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret. 2 Peter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises. Some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should what? Reach repentance. Then confessing Jesus as the Son of God. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We find that Timothy had made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses, and we must do that. Be baptized for the remission of your sins, Acts 2.38 to put on Christ. As many as you as were baptized into Christ have been clothed with Christ, Galatians 3.27. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. 
having been buried with him in baptism, Colossians 2.12, in which you were raised also through, through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead, and you who are dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. Endure to the end. You'll be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. Do not fear what you're about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you in prison, that you may be tested and for ten, ten days have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing this, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. First Corinthians 15. 58. Now, thank you for joining us for this lesson. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, like us on YouTube. If you're in the area, come to our services at 935 for Bible study, 1035 for morning worship, 4 p.m. for our pre-evening assembly on Sunday evening, Wednesday night Bible study at 6.35. Be sure to download the note cards that you will find in the description of this lesson.